Rock said it was much better tempo. They'll actually mark it right at the six-yard line on first and ten. In motion was Miles, and the give straight up the middle to Cameron Marshall. Marshall doesn't seem to have the moves that he did last week. And playing on that, that bum ankle. He actually injured that during training camp, and uh, he told me before the season, he goes, I'm a slow healer. And uh, he re-injured it in, I believe, the second game of the year against Missouri. And he's been hobbled ever since. Just a pickup of one for Cameron Marshall, putting more pressure on the passing game. And Osweiler, a little pump fake, and going deep along the sidelines to Flugrad, and it's knocked away. Jordan Poyer, who already has a couple of interceptions, batted that one down. Now, Poyer looks like a player who's done a lot of film study over the past week. Well, I tell you what, I don't know why they keep trying to test Jordan Poyer. They try and get him with a double move, and it looked that like they were going to beat him, but then he has that recovery speed. And watch this. Perfect technique. Looks back at the football, turns into the wide receiver, turns his head so he doesn't get the penalty. Excellent job tonight. Osweiler sacked at the three-yard line. Rusty Fernando from Apache Junction went to Glendale Community College, the speed rusher, taking Osweiler down and setting up a fourth down. And that means Josh Hubner will be kicking from his own end zone. Watch Cameron Marshall. He's got Fernando one-on-one -on -one trying to pass block. But Fernando with the swim move to get to Osweiler. Protection is critical on third downs for any running back to master. And right there, Fernando got the best of Cameron Marshall. And a dangerous return man in Jordan Poyer, who's been doing it defensively. He had the punt return for a touchdown last week, but he fumbles it. On the field and recovered by Oliver Aaron. ASU will take over. Oliver Aaron was right there to pounce on it. The fumble by Poyer, who had done everything right up, up until this point. Sometimes the best returners, they feel like they can do anything, and they can make plays right there. Bad decision. You can see Poyer was stumbling. A little stumble, and he lost some concentration right there. But boy, that's a big mistake. ASU gets a huge break right now to flip the field position and gain valuable momentum. No kidding. It appeared that Oregon State would have the excellent field position. Would try to add to their lead. Up by six. Oregon State 13-7. to seven. And now ASU will try to take advantage of their turnover. Cameron Marshall puts the head down. He loses it. The ball's on the field. Let's see if they mark it down. Another wrestling match. It is a bevy of turnovers in the first couple of quarters. Trying to separate the players. See who comes up with it. And Oregon State has the ball. ASU gives it right back. Feti Unga was there for Oregon State to pick up the loose ball. Boy, not a good two-play sequence for Marshall. Whiffing on the block on third down and here. Coughing up the ball. That's the second time, whether or not this is going to be called a fumble at the end of the day, that Marshall has put the ball on the ground. Got to protect that. I think he's down. Looked like that elbow was down. I think ASU will maintain possession. Mm. Boy, I'll tell you what, though. It has silenced the crowd for the most part. They don't like the call right now. There's some chants going up around Sun Devil Stadium. You can see how the fans are upset. More frustrated, I think, than anything. What's transpired? Timeout. Right, ASU will call the timeout. <laughs> that young man doesn't like the call. No, not at all. But <laughs> Future I tell referee. you what, Tom. Michael Doctor, their linebacker, puts a serious lick on Cameron Marshall. He comes in here and just blows him up, and that's what startles Marshall and makes him lose control of the football. It's a 30-second timeout, and right now, we're not quite sure if they are reviewing this play. All right, with the NLDS series on another channel, Fox Sports Arizona will have the best coverage of the D-backs 
during the postseason with pre- and post-game shows. Coverage of Game 1 follows our game here tonight. Then tomorrow after Game 2, tune in to D-Backs Live. And for Game 3 on Tuesday, join us for a one-hour pre-game show and the post-game show as well. They are reviewing that fumble call on Cameron Marshall. You don't have plans for dinner tonight. I know you have plans at <laughs> halftime for the uh, Hall of Fame induction, but at, at this rate, we could be here after midnight. Boy, 8.28 still to go here in the second quarter of a slow-moving game. Well, it's shaping up to be a long one, but it's a good one. This is a great game so far. Oregon State came to play, that's for sure. So we await word from Jack Folliard. And a couple more looks. Cameron Marshall, was he down? Did that elbow hit the ground and then the ball came out? And took a couple of good shots to the those white helmets that ASU has brought to the game tonight. Count all those Oregon State defenders, four or five, converging on Cameron Marshall. Well, that's what you like to see as a defensive coach is when you stop the tape, when the play is over, how many white jerseys can you count in the frame? And right there, it looked like a feeding frenzy for the Oregon State defense. Everybody getting their hat on the ball, trying to make something happen. A beleaguered defense, giving up 30 points per game in their first three losses of the season. I mentioned that devastating opener, the overtime loss at home to Sacramento State, an FCS team. A missed field goal by Trevor Romaine at the end of regulation sent it into overtime. And they had the loss to Wisconsin at Camp Randall, losing 35 to nothing. They fell to UCLA last week at home. Overall, Mike Riley and his Beavers, they've lost five in a row, including the final two games of last season. Tom, I think it's down. But then again, you run into that is it conclusive? Do they have enough evidence that that ball wasn't moving before the elbow? It looked like it happened at the exact same time. Yeah, and we had the same exact situation with Teron Ward at the goal line. After further review, the runner's left forearm, forearm touched the ground with the ball in it. There you go. Therefore, it'll be Maryland State's ball, second down at the 48-yard line. A smart timeout call by Dennis Erickson so they could review that play. And you know OSU is trying to line up quickly and continue action. So it pays off for Erickson and ASU. They will hang on to the football. When Cameron Marshall breathes a sigh of relief. And the last thing ASU needed was yet another turnover. So actually, because they win that, that challenge and that review, ASU will maintain the timeout. And Osweiler will have it now on second down. I right, talk about this Oregon State team having lost five in a row. Last year they went five and seven, but they had the toughest schedule in the nation as they played five of top ten teams, including TCU and Boise State. Boy, doesn't get much harder than that. That's... Oregon State is a good football team. They're a great football team last year. Just running into some tough times right now. The flare to Kyle Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks takes a pop. It gets the first down for Arizona State. Pick up of eight, and then a late flag, I believe, falls. It could have been a late hit against Oregon State on Middlebrooks. Rashad Reynolds was over there. There's his teammate Kevin Fromm, a, a real free spirit on this team. Horse collar on the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, they call the horse collar, and here's Middlebrooks along the sidelines, and yep, there it was. Fifth penalty on Oregon State. It was called on Michael Doctor, one of their co-captains, a sophomore from Tulsa. He was the one hit with that horse collar penalty. They issue it from the 24-yard line. Osweiler to a wide open Joel Robinson. Touchdown, Arizona State. 24-yard strike to Jarrell. And now Arizona State can take the lead with a point after. 
Well, this is why ASU's offense causes so much confusion. You're going to see Jamal Miles come in motion, and everybody jumps on to take him in the flat. But nobody remembers or thinks to cover Jarrell Robinson. He kind of sneaks back in there. Osweiler recognizes what's going on and delivers the ball to a wide open Jarrell Robinson. Well, on the game clock, it only took 32 seconds to go 53 yards for that touchdown. But we had to wait for the review after what looked to be a fumble by Marshall. Instead, second touchdown of the night for the Devils.